Good morning and welcome to this virtual bridge session. And today it's about discovering maps, a guide to online map resources from the National Library of Scotland. Uh, as someone who's very much into libraries and very much into maps, then this certainly plays to, to my delights. And I'm going to hand you over now to Lara Quinney from the National Library of Scotland to tell you more about it. Thank you very much indeed. Let me just swap back to sharing my screen with you. Um, and thank you very much for inviting me to talk this morning. Um, I'm here today hoping to turn you all into map lovers um, by helping you discover the National Library of Scotland's maps website and the resources and services that we can offer for staff and for students. And I'm aiming to give a brief introduction to our collection and to our maps website. I'll outline some of the services we offer and I'm hoping to finish with a live demo of our maps website with it being nice and responsive and behaving itself, so fingers crossed. And I'll talk about some of the key features of the website as well, um, some of the different tools that we offer for people to interact with our maps. And then I'm very happy to take questions at the end. Um, and as I go along, if slides start misbehaving or everything, do start waving at me madly, Kenji, or something, and let me know if there's a problem. So the National Library of Scotland's map collection, we hold over 2 million maps and atlases. We do have a particular interest in maps relating to Scotland, but our collection is international and we have detailed mapping for England, Wales and Ireland, as well as series maps for the rest of the world and a wide range of atlases from school atlases, national atlases for, national atlases for individual countries and atlases of the oceans, atlases of birds migration patterns or volcanoes or wine. So whatever your interest, there's a very wide range in the collection. And beyond that, we we're, we're don't just hold terrestrial maps, we have star charts, we have atlases of the moon, um, we have even maps of fantasy worlds. So whether you're looking for Middle Earth or Treasure Island, we may be able to help you. Um, and the collection itself is very diverse. We have medieval manuscripts, we have early printed atlases, right up to detailed ordnance survey maps, admiralty charts, and modern digital mapping data that comes into us now in born digital form, um, both from the Ordnance Survey and from some individual private map makers. Now the born digital um, current mapping data, you do need to be on site to view um, because of the copyright restrictions. That's something that you do need to come into our library reading rooms in Edinburgh or Glasgow to view that data. But it's a very rich and diverse collection and you can search the map collection using the library's online catalogue, apart from our manuscript maps, which we're hoping um, to get included in the online search over the coming year. And the maps team are also very happy to assist with inquiries about the collection and to advise on relevant maps. We're very used to people to come to us with, do you have a map of? And that's absolutely fine. You can give us a place of interest or a country of interest, the type of mapping you're looking for. And we're very happy um, to suggest things that might be relevant to you, both maps that we've digitized and then from the wider collection material that might be useful for you. Um, and at the moment, just email us with any inquiries or fill in the inquiry form on the library website. Now, for the past two decades, we've been busy digitising our map collection and we now have over 240,000 maps available to view online. Um, and these include very detailed ordnance survey maps of Scotland, England and Wales. Uh, they include early world atlases. First World War trench maps, um, like this one here from 1917 of the area around Ypres. We've got town plans, we've got engineering plans from the Stevenson family collection, geological maps and many more besides. And I should say our website is completely free to use, it's open to people worldwide. Um, and what we're doing now is that as we digitise new maps, wherever possible, we are georeferencing them, which means that when we add them to the website, we can offer a georeferenced interface where you can overlay historic mapping with modern satellite imagery or LIDAR data or various different um, sets of modern mapping, such as the OpenStreetMap project. Um, also some layers of uh, aerial photography that's sort of mixed with mapping as well. And you can also compare different maps side by side, both different layers of historic mapping. So here we see Edinburgh in 1804 and then in the 1890s, or you can compare the historic maps side by side with modern maps or modern aerial photography. And you can also measure distance or the area of your site of interest on the georeference viewer as well. 
Now, to comply with copyright law, I should say that virtually all the maps on our website have been selected for being out of copyright. There are a few small examples where we've been able to add um, in copyright mapping with the permission of the copyright holder, um, and that's flagged um, when it goes through, but that's, that's a very small percentage. And it's why most of the maps on our website are at least 50 years old, because we've had to go for the out of copyright material in our collection. Where we've digitised the maps in-house, the maps are released under a CC BY licence that allows both commercial and non-commercial reuse of these maps with attribution. In some cases, though, we did work with a third party to get the maps digitised, and in that case, they're released under a CC BY licence that allows non-commercial reuse. Um, and uh, we've also got some maps on the website which are not from our collection and which were digitised by external parties. For example, estate maps of Dumfriesshire that were digitised by the Dumfries Archives Mapping Project. And these maps are held in private collections, but the Dumfries Archives Mapping Project has been able to widen access to these by getting them digitised. And we're a partner in this and we are hosting the images so that researchers worldwide can get access to these maps. Um, and you can hopefully see um, how we've, we've basically highlighted where these have come from. And if you click on the link, you get contact details for the project. Um, and in general, when you're viewing the map images, you should see that if there are any particular restrictions on the map, we've added an alert above the map image um, to just alert you that those there might be some restrictions on the reuse of these. As I say, otherwise, they're covered by the CC BY license that allows both commercial and non-commercial reuse. Um, we're also very happy to supply copies of maps. Um, you can, when you're on the website and when you're viewing an image, you should see an order this map button. Normally, we would be happy to provide colour prints, photocopies and high resolution images. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, with the library being closed, we're restricted to just supplying high resolution images to download. Um, so those are the ones that can be ordered at present. Normally, we can also provide um, geotiffs as well if you're wanting georeferenced map images. Um, we've also got a historic maps appy, which you can find information about through the maps website. If you're wanting a layer of mapping for a project, um, this provides layers of historic maps of Great Britain, which can be embedded in a website or used as a backdrop for your own data or to create derivative works. And the National Library of Scotland has got a data foundry, which is its platform for data collections. And on the data foundry, you'll find collections in machine readable form, and that includes digitised material and map and spatial data, as well as metadata. Um, and a recent addition to the data foundry was over 2000 maps and plans of Scotland from the Stevenson Engineering Firm Archive, um, which is, includes maps and firm plans they made themselves and also those acquired through their interest in civil engineering. Um, and another great resource in the data foundry is the GB1900 data. This was a crowdsourced project where volunteers transcribed place names on a layer of historic six inch to the mile ordnance survey maps dating from around 1900. So the mapping layer we created and then volunteers were able to basically go through all those maps um, and basically check the names and then someone else would double check that they had transcribed it correctly. Um, and what this has created is an incredibly detailed historic gazetteer containing over 2.5 million entries. Um, so you can find everything through this from lime kilns to the place named gallows on maps or breweries or mills, whatever it is that you're interested in researching. And that data is available as well through the data foundry for projects. Um, the maps team give regular introductory workshops, um, discover the maps website and maps for family and local history. Um, these are free and they can be booked on the library website. At present, these are all taking place online via Zoom. Um, and you, the library also provides a regular programme of talks, also online at present, which are also uploaded to the National Library of Scotland's YouTube channel. And you'll find several map related talks there at present um, that you can view. And we're also happy to provide bespoke talks and workshops for groups at present, obviously, <laughs> online virtual ones. Um, so we can demonstrate how to search and compare maps on the website. We can discuss different types of mapping and the information they provide, as well as advice on using maps as sources. It could be a general introduction to our collections, or it could be focused on a location or a type of mapping that was relevant to a particular course or student project. Um, so if a class would benefit from a tailored session, 
do please get in touch, although do please get in touch in advance so that we've got time to prepare this. It's not something we can necessarily do with just a day or two's notice. Um, hopefully at some point in the future we will be able um, to host group visits to our MAPS reading room again. Um, and these can either be a general introduction to the MAP collection or tailored to the interests and research topics of the group that's visiting. Um, I thought I'd briefly mention one of the recent projects library staff have been working on, which is Zoom into blogs, which are being added to the library's website. Each one's focused on a different Scottish local authority area, and they highlight relevant items from that location from the library's collections. So it's really diverse, so you'll find out about books, maps, films, newspapers, and it can be a great starting point for discovering the richness of our collections. And our MAPS team are always happy to answer questions, both on the MAPS on our website and the wider MAP collection. And hopefully at some point in the next few months, our MAPS reading room will be open again. Um, and, and you're welcome to visit as an individual um, and view the MAPS and atlases in our collection. So do get in touch with us. Um, now, what I'm hoping to do at this point um, is to swap and share our MAPS website with you. Um, so let me just swap over. Oh, hopefully you're all, yes, I can see some nods there. Hopefully you're seeing the MAPS website here. Um, so if I can now go in a bit more depth about the resources we have online and how you can discover those and some of the different tools we have. So this is the homepage to our MAPS website, maps.nls.uk. Down the left-hand side, you can browse by different categories of MAPS. So if, for example, you're looking for maps of different Scottish counties, you could click on county maps. You would get an alphabetical list of the counties. And if you click on Shetland, you'll then get a chronological list of the maps that we hold covering the Shetland Isles. And you can just use the back button to come back. Um, or if, for example, you were interested in um, aerial photography or land utilization maps, just need to click on that topic and you'll then get links to view those maps and potentially also information about that type of mapping with quite a few information pages in this section um, that give you the background to these different forms of mapping um, or how the different series um, were mapped. Um, so those are great to go in and browse um, and discover the different maps on our website but you can also go in through the find by place search and this allows you to type in the place of interest. So if you would like to see maps of Haddington, type in Haddington, choose the best, best match from the drop down list, and you will be taken to that location. And then you can choose the type of mapping you're looking for, whether that's an ordnance survey map, perhaps town plans, let's go for town plans. And then you can click on, if you just now just click on the map itself, and this is where I realised I've left you all in the wrong section. Um, I'll just move you. Uh, you get thumbnail images of the maps that match your search. Click on a thumbnail image to see that map in detail. And you can zoom in and pan around to explore the image. And just again, just use the back button to return to your search. So that should let you find all sorts of different types of maps. So if we go back to the Ordnance Survey for Haddington, um, set the scale that you're interested in, click on the map for where you're wanting the map for. And as I say, you get these thumbnail images that let you go in and explore the maps in our collection. And the find by place search should let you discover all the maps that we've digitized as you work your way through the different categories. Um, so it's a very comprehensive search, uh, but there's more. If I go back to the maps homepage, we also have our georeferenced maps search. And um, these are for the maps where we've taken the digitized images and we georeference these maps to identify um, the locations, the coordinates for the corners of each sheet. We've then cropped these map images so that you've only got the actual map itself and the surrounding information has been removed. And then we've created um, seamed layers of these images so that instead of worrying about, oh, my site's on the edge of two maps or it's at the corner of four maps and I'm having to keep swapping around, now you can just zoom in and pan around. It's not absolutely perfect. You probably possibly can just see the sort of cross of lines there as we've brought four different sheets together to make up this layer. But it means now I can just sit and 
explore the maps um, and not have to worry about swapping sheets as I go over the edge of one sheet. And it also means there's lots of extra tools that we've got. So like the um, find by place viewer, you can type in a place name. So if I was to type in Durham and I can pick um, Durham County Durham, let's go for the city. It'll take me to that location. I can then choose the type of mapping I want. So I'm going to go for the detailed six inch, 25 inches the mile ordnance survey maps. And I'll just zoom in a bit to let you see this in more detail. And so here we have Durham in the 1890s, the details of the map are here at the bottom of the screen. And I can explore this map. I can also compare historic Durham to Durham today. This little blue button here is a slider. If I click and drag it, it makes the historical mapping layer go transparent. And that means you can see whatever you've got set as the background map, which will default to modern satellite imagery. But you can also select things like LIDAR data um, or for Durham, or you could select something like the OpenStreetMap project. And then we can move the slider back and the historic mapping starts to go opaque again and you can compare past and present very easily. Uh, we also have a side-by-side -side viewer and this, this allows you to compare um, either past and present. And again, you can use the drop-down menus to choose which type of data you would like. Or you can compare two different layers of historic mapping um, and you can have um, maps from a different date to compare. Um, so here we've got um, the 1950s on the right and the 1890s on the left. And if you click and drag on one of the maps, you'll see that they move together. So you can keep exploring with the side by side viewer. And I should also say we do have a few other tools in here um, that I'll let you explore in your own. There's a spyglass viewer which will give you a wee spyglass of historic mapping. You get little prop-up prompts the first time you explore the different um, tools on the website, um, just to give you a bit of help with them if you wish. Um, so that can let you just move a little window of historic mapping um, across the screen. Um, and let's just go back to the overlays. And there are also measurement tools, so you can measure distance or area on the map and you'll find the answers are given in both metric and imperial measurements. And when you're in the georeference viewer, you can swap to the find by place viewer if you want to see if there are additional additions of the maps. Um, because when we've done the georeference viewer, it's, it's not all the maps we've digitized, it's different um, series that we have been able to georeference. Um, and so um, if you've found an interesting map, you may want to check in the find by place viewer whether there are extra additions um, of that plan. And you'll be able to find that by swapping to find by place, which should take you to the same location. Um, but down the right hand side, you can see that there are perhaps additional additions of that plan to be viewed and explored. So for example, there's a 1947 edition of the six inch the mile plan of Durham. Uh, right, um, I'm very pleased the website has behaved itself for that. <laughs> I've had one or two demos where um, the speed has all slowed down and you're going, what we should be seeing when it loads. Um, so what I just wanted to finish by saying um, was as I say, we've got a very rich collection of maps at the National Library of Scotland, about 2 million items. So just over 10% um, has been digitised and can be viewed online. The other 90% um, is stuff that we can um, either show you if you're able to come into the reading room um, or we can answer questions on. We're very happy to deal with remote inquiries um, and can demonstrate and can provide information. And we may be able to get things digitised and supply high resolution images if you're looking for high resolution images and items in the collection. Um, we have an inquiry service um, and we're really happy to answer any type of question um, from very specific ones on a particular item that you already know about to more sort of general ones, whether we can provide advice on what might be relevant maps um, or useful ones for you. Um, so we look forward to hearing from you.
Thank you very much. Yeah, that was intriguing. Uh, I would ask the quick question that whenever I look at map website, there's a strange thing that happens because then I go back to the clock and several hours have passed quite uh, quite readily, but I don't think there's an answer to that one. Um, could I ask, do you have any specific education resources about uh, understanding interpreting maps available? There is a bit of a resource on the National Library of Scotland website um, that was done actually more aimed at sort of school um, users um, of the site, um, giving some background information to maps and some of the terms we use. So giving information, for example, on scales, on the use of keys and legends to interpret mm -hmm. symbols and colours on maps. Um, so that does give um, some, some, some basic information and that's available on the main National Library of Scotland website. Um, I'll just find the link to that and I can share that in the chat here. Wonderful, thank you very much. Um, I'll invite the floor to ask questions. I can keep on going with questions, but uh, I don't like to hog the, the, the chair. Um, well, I will ask another one as well. Uh, are you aware of any particular uses in further or higher education of the maps outside what you'd normally expect? Obviously, for geography type work, then it's clear there's a use there, but uh, uh, anything uh, more um, creative, I suppose? No, we actually find there's a very wide range of different users um, and different uses for our maps within different subject areas, because it can be everything from someone who perhaps is uh, maybe in English things, looking at a travel writer, looking perhaps at someone who's written about the travels around Britain, and we've um, produced, had maps that have been used to create various websites that are looking at, you know, historic travellers and their accounts, and our maps have provided sort of base, a base mapping to trace their journeys. Um, all sorts of different artistic reasons to look at the maps, from the actual full map itself to people interested perhaps in things like compass roses or sea monsters or different, perhaps um, some of the views of cities and towns that can be included on maps. Um, archaeologists, we find, make quite heavy use of the historical mapping um, and are very interested in, um, you know, obviously what they can show in terms of, you know, past um, buildings on the land or, you um, uh, yes, roads and all the routes, things like that. Um, and we've got with things like the um, Stevenson archive that we've recently been digitizing. That's a fabulous mm. collection. Uh, many of them perhaps, are, some of them are very clearly maps. Others are perhaps more actually technical drawings for things like lighthouses, the lights within the lighthouses, um, bridge designs, um, lock gates, even um, some of the trucks for some of the railways. There's all sorts of things in that. Um, so some of them are, are very mappy. Others are perhaps more in the sort of engineering diagram level. So no, there they can be a, very wide range of uses. And with the Maps API, people are using maps as a base layer for all sorts of different interpretations, whether that's perhaps statistical analysis of things in the past and then using the maps as a base layer. Um, so much possibility. Uh, do you ever find that the entire audience have gone off to look at old maps of their house whilst uh, you've just finished your presentation? Because uh, well, <laughs> well, when we do our maps for family history workshop, that is one of the jobs we give them. And mm. yes, it's true. I think there are some who don't necessarily come back um, <laughs> because they've got themselves nice, nicely lost. Oh, because it Yes, we find that as well to be honest when we're answering inquiries. You, you go in to look for one thing that your inquirers ask, and then you're like, oh, look, I find a chocolate factory, and you, 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 you wander off down completely different um, different lines. But that's that's half the half the fun of it. All the things well, that you discover in the map that you didn't even realise you were looking for awesome. until you go back and look at it. Well, I had a very practical use when I moved into this old cottage that I'm uh, living in. I, I was asked for, for the insurance purposes how old it was. And uh, by going back to old maps, I saw it was there in 1740, but wasn't there in a 1726 map. So I could narrow it down to 14 years at the beginning of the 18th century, at least. So um, that was, was quite, quite interesting. Well, I'm hogging it. Any questions from the floor? Feel free to unmute and ask or any comments, uh, any ways in which you can see yourself using the resources available. Kenji, on to you. Um, I, I was just wondering um, how, how deep or how, how extensive are your maps for outside of the UK? So do, does the collection, you did mention the collection covered Europe and the wider world. Um, can I, can, I, I just, honestly, I just searched for my old family home in Japan and I found that you had old US military records um, from from where my, my family f f first uh, stayed. 
Um, the answer to that is, I'm afraid it does actually vary very much whereabouts in the world um, you're looking, um, because some of the about the history of the National Library of Scotland's collection is that the National Library of Scotland was only founded in 1925, and a large part of our collection was passed to us from the Library of the Faculty of Advocates of Scotland. Um, so back in the 19th century, although they had the right to claim a copy of all the maps published, the, they didn't necessarily take everything, and there was definitely... I, I, I have to say, I think there's a slight bias to places the advocates like to go on holiday. A, we've got lots of historic maps of Paris in our collection. <laughs> um, but also because a large amount of the mapping that comes into the National Library of Scotland comes in through something called legal deposit, where we can claim copies of maps published in the UK. There's therefore that bias towards what the UK publishing market is producing maps on. And obviously some parts of the world, there's perhaps they feel there's greater interest and more maps are produced. Um, we do purchase some historic map series, so we do try and have series mapping covering all the world. But again, not all countries are pr producing um, the same types of mapping and not all countries make their mapping available to be purchased abroad. Um, so that can also be a limiting factor as well. And going back historically, um, we have a much richer collection, I'm afraid, for parts of the world where the British Empire uh, was because a lot there was obviously a lot of uh, mapping coming in through sort of imperial, British imperial sources, uh, whether we were mapping it ourselves or we were purchasing maps of those areas. Also places where Britain's been involved in wars because war can be a great prompt for maps to be created. So we have a very rich collection of Second World War mapping produced by the um, geographical staff, um, both British mapping and also American military mapping, um, which gives us great worldwide coverage, but obviously there's perhaps sadder reasons why we have the mapping from that date. Um, I, I, I really am impressed by the, the interface that you demonstrated, just the, the side by side, the overlap, the transparency, even simple tools like spotlighting, which is excellent for, for an educational setting, especially if you're talking through maps and points of interest. Um, okay, I, and, and this is the slightly geeky bit. I, I did notice you had a button for 3D and I, I just... <laughs> It didn't mean just desperately wants to ask, what's the, what's the 3D thing? <laughs> uh, let me just get that back up again. Um, uh, no, hang on. We've just come out of... Are you now seeing the map screen again? I am, yes. Yep. yes lovely. Right, let's just go back out of that. Go back. We'll go back into the georeference map screen, which is where the 3D is. You're quite right. Um, now, it works better if you generally with maybe some of the slightly smaller scale mapping layers on um, for the 3D. So I'm just going to swap to the Bartholomew half inch maps um, because they give you a better sense of um, height. And let's let's just move, we'll just head for slightly, slightly hillier areas here. Um, and then let's see if 3D is going to be cooperative. What it should do is it basically gives you that sort of vertical exaggeration, go away pop up box. and instead of seeing it as a flat map, the basic Ooh. data is being used to create a 3D mapping. Now, just give it a minute to load. Um, afraid how fast it loads does depend a bit on things like the graphics card in your machine, because <laughs> um, it is a bit more um, data heavy. But what I can then do is pull the 3D. I'm, I'm just impressed how much it's like the, the kind of the Still. Google map experience. I mean, it's, it, it just looks really, the interface looks really current. It's just, it looks really nice. Thank you. And that's basically, you can you can tilt your viewer and tilt. Oh, I'm just thinking, let's just let's just swap into the Lake District. Let's get somewhere really nice and nice and hilly for this, um, just just to maximise the impact of the 3D viewer. Um, so we will just take ourselves into the fells here and say, pull that down, and I can twist and tilt, so you can really yes. see the profile of the hills with the 3D viewer. Um, but just experiment. You can just try different layers. Some of them will look better, some of them won't. But you're not going to break anything. Just just try out the different layers. Oh, there goes my afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yes, I'd say we have had a few complaints about people losing weekends to our maps website. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, enjoy his comment. Teacher can't unmute, but um, it looks like a fantastic resource, and uh, and she thinks that the school resource that explain maps will be very useful in further education as well. She's a librarian at West College Scotland. Excellent. So, yes, I should have said I did paste, um, there's two links in the chat now, one to our mapping history resource, and the other one is a resource we did to accompany an exhibition a few years ago, You Are Here, which sort of covers some of the key points about maps and the different terms that we use. So those are both freely available on the website. 
Excellent. I'll finish off with one quick question. <laughs> it might not be quick about um, the future development. What sort of projects are ongoing for the future of this? Oh, that's, yeah, sorry, it's a good one. I, sh I should have covered that. Um, at the moment, the, this last year, we've been doing a big push to digitise all of our single sheet maps of Scotland and add those to the website. So a lot of Scottish mapping has gone on the last year and there's a few more series to come over the next month or two. But we're now turning our focus to our international map collection and we're starting to digitise a lot more series of maps um, covering the rest of Britain, covering Ireland, but also covering the wider world. Um, so over the next five years, that's, that's our big focus, um, is to get much more international mapping on the website. Um, so hopefully that will make it a very useful tool for a much wider range of inquiries. Thank you very much, Lara, for that insight into the use of maps, certainly uh, some, a resource that's certainly very accessible digitally, even though many of us will like the feel of the paper map in front of us. And then the things that we can do with the digital versions are quite clear there from your presentation. Uh, so with that, I'll bring the formal part to a close. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you've been watching the recording, uh, please try and join us on a live session at some point. Uh, with that, Lara, thank you very much. You're welcome.